Lord, you are, you deserve all praise for the times that we've not lived up to your expectations, the times we've sinned against you, the times that we didn't do what we should have been doing. We, we beg your forgiveness and we will try to do better with your help. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for the opportunity to live in this great country in these, in these unprecedented times that we can make a difference together. Um, help us to discern the correct thing to do, make the right decisions, to fulfill your will, and uh, help us to all be healthy. Help us to stick up for our children and the people who are less fortunate than, than we are. And we ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody. Welcome. Looks like a lot of people didn't get the email or didn't feel like coming yeah. to this song. But uh, we got to start meeting again like we did before. We'll Just uh, talk with Ruben, and instead of doing it Mondays, we're going to meet the second Tuesday of every month. It seemed like it was a better time for Ruben. So it'll be 7 o'clock the second Tuesday, and I'll be sending emails all the time. Now, not Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. See, I, you know what? Thursday. Okay. I, Are we sure Thursday is a good day? The second Thursday. Anyway, Ruben, Ruben's the co-chair, and uh, for people that don't know, uh, in order to be a successful organization with the number of people that we got, it can't be done with uh, just one guy, so we got three guys. Got a, well, we get according to titles, you got to have titles with the square ball okay? So you got a title, but we're all equal. So there's a chair, it's me, co chair Ruben, and vice chair Jay. And uh, we have exactly the same amount of authority, so we can go in different directions and we can do multiple tasks instead of having one guy trying to oversee everything and it don't work. So, that's kind of why we set up like that. And there's no more half votes. Uh, they vote, everyone voted just to have the committeemen vote. So there's uh, 19 committeemen, and uh, there's uh, one, two committeemen at large. One's uh, Reagan Freitag, uh, Madison, and she's an attorney, and she'll help us out when we need a story help us out. And uh, Jay Roby is the other committeeman at large. Both of them big ass. So with that, that's how we're set up now. So if you have any questions, you can ask me later. The idea is that we got to win elections. So I thought you were your hand or something. So um, pretty much that's all we got. All I have for our chairman report, unless somebody has any questions about what's going on or anything. Uh, uh, is anybody in contact with Jim Daly? Right? Me? Yeah. You are? Um, there was uh, a thing on Facebook where he was talking about like uh, gun buybacks and gun violence and all that stuff. Is there a way to get? Yeah. Who's the guy running for sheriff? Jim. Jim Riley. Jim Riley. Jim Riley. The Irish guy that's running for sheriff. Jim, Jim Riley, or Jim talking? Riley? Right. Yeah, I can get yeah. a little uh, It's just uh, some people are concerned about his statement on Facebook. Uh, I'll call him and straighten him out and tell him that he's got to be a lot more clear because everybody in this town is pro gun. Yeah, except he was a lot more clear when he was at one of our fundraisers. He made it pretty clear that he doesn't follow the Constitution. He follows the law that was different than the Constitution. He did? Yeah, correct. Well, we, we asked him if he followed the law or the Constitution. Yeah. Well, I'm going to invite him to talk to us. That will solve that problem. But I guarantee you one thing, if he's not pro-Second Amendment, right wing, he 
won't have any help out of here. At least for once. So, sitting, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I was, uh, but there's nobody running against him, right? Uh, Mike Kelly. We don't want Mike Kelly. No, Mike Kelly's worse. All right. Kelly, he's a, he's a Democrat, but he's uh, also uh, did bad things while he was in office, like catch and release. So we don't mind any of that stuff here. So I'll find out with Jim, though. I'm going to have like all these county whites come and talk. That way everybody gets to meet them. Oh, it's during the, uh, the whole, you remember the whole mask thing in the beginning when all the parents were fighting? Yeah. It was like one of the first fundraisers he was at. Probably was a year in the mess. And that's why we had asked him, okay, what if parents were at the school board meetings and they say, you know, they're going to come and arrest these parents because they're not complying or whatever. And he's like, well, we have to follow that law. And I'm like, yeah, it's not a law, first of all. And I'm like, it's unconstitutional. He's like, well, well, that's not what we follow. So we should have him come and talk and clarify. No, we'll have him come, come and talk and everybody can give him a piece of their mind, too. Great. Because he's going to ask tough questions. Let's put it like this. If our group doesn't like somebody, we don't support them. And the other thing is, like, if somebody, which has happened already, when a different politician uh, says something nasty to one of our people for no reason at all, and if you're arguing, that's okay. But if uh, somebody just goes after one of our people, that means they're going after all of us, therefore we want nothing to do with that politician ever again. <coughs> so it's, it sounds kind of bad, but uh, that's what happened with Mr. Pekka, you guys don't know. He, Ruben went to give him a check and he started yelling at Ruben. So Ruben put the check back in his pocket. Yeah. No, no way. So, just know that too, that we're a group that we all stick together and uh, if we got a problem and we air it out up over here and if it's something that the whole group needs to be involved with, we have no problem with going ghost on some candidate because it doesn't agree with us. We are conservatives, everybody in this group. So anyway, moving on from that, we got, uh, Jay, you got a report? Uh, one of the things that we do at the HTRO is, is getting prepared for elections. Now we know we have an election coming up in November and Steve's going to, you know, win. But we also have our election coming up in 23. Now everyone in this room, you know, pretty much knows when we stand on the school issue. This is probably one of the most crucial years when it comes to electing school boards. If anybody knows anybody interested in running for school board, Please PM me and I will put him in touch with our parent group. We started vetting candidates at our last parent meeting that we have. We have this little group in there where we want to get a strong slate because the HDRO isn't only here for conservatives on a daily basis. They may have issues, they have you know something that they want to talk about. We are here to get conservatives elected. We are here as the Will County representation in Homer Glenn. For the Republican Party. We have to get slates together and we want to fill spots. Our goal when we go into an election, if there's a spot available, we want one of our candidates in there. School boards especially, and you know, God, you know, let's really think about it, the last mayoral campaign in Homer Glenn went uncontested. We can't have that anymore. Okay, no more uncontested spots. So the school boards. We've, and that's what happens to school boards. We've nice got to get people in. So it's crucial. So if you know anybody that wants to run for school board, in any of the school boards in our area, any of the schools that, that, that filter into District 205, just, you know, just, you know, have them private messenger me. I don't know if you guys know me. I'm known as J-Man at Facebook. So uh, I'm, that was, that was, that was, that was me and facetious. Everyone here knows me. But please have them have them um, message me. What's the time frame on that? When's the election? And when do we got to have the candidates? The election is in April okay. of 23. We really want to have our slates filled and ready to roll by the end of September. Do we have to have signatures? September yes. 20th. Here's when the packets go up. 
that's when the you have to have the signature back. Back. No, 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 that's when full cash. That's when full cash. And yeah, they, they start normally they're start. due around Thanksgiving. They're due around Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. We want to have one hundred signatures. I think for school board, I thought it was like always fifty signatures. It was really low. It's fifty. It is going to be different this year because they lowered it last time because of COVID. Yeah, I think trustee was a hundred and four and a half down too. Yeah, everything's going to be different. So, so it might be more. Or it might be less. So or who knows? Okay. Uh, and they redistricted, so. So. Is that factor into it? So please, school board guys, just have a PM if you can. One important thing to keep in mind during the signature period is that we turn our our signatures into the right clerk that this mistake <laughs> has been made before so for the village when we have our signature packets it goes to the village clerk uh it, the mistake has been made before where they brought it to will county now for the school board i'm guessing that will goes county. to will county so we have to make sure if somebody in here is going to run off on their own and run without a slate that that information is clear um as to where those packets go yeah, I mean, eventually we're going to get to a point where if we can't fill all the slots, then we've got to take the candidates that we have, and we've got to start sitting down with them, and we want to go, because some people have never run before, so we want to, you know, kind of do a couple of, you know, just yeah. informational meetings okay. so they know what to expect. Yeah, we're going to have a campaign 101 with the uh, Illinois no Opportunity Project. We have Mark Cavers. We're going to get him out. He'll talk about running and how campaigns work and everything so everybody understands it. So that'll so, be in September. I have a question. We have to turn all of our signatures into our clerk from the village who is also running for here? Yep. Yes, that's just like what we did when we were trusting. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, now we have, I don't want to play you. Put it in the old stuff. Right now, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, well, just what you said, our major, our, well, no, our, no, our major focus has been 92, 205, and 33C. Yeah. But we would love, uh, like, 91. Oh, we would okay. love okay. to have the, all the schools that filter yeah. into. And 33C. 33C, I think we always. Correct? 33C, they don't go the same year as high school, do they? 30, no, 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 they're, they're up for election. It's three spots up for election. So. No, every one of the schools every are up. Every, every school. school. We've got, we've got, there's a couple, so they go every other year. So we've got, we've got three spots open at 23, 4, 33C. We've got three spots open at 23, 4, 33C. And it makes a difference. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, we, we have schools. people, we're working yeah. on all of them, but we also, at our last parent meeting, we had all the schools that filtered into, we got 16 schools, I think, okay, so that filtered into 205, and there are spots that they need to be filled. What we did is, you know, not, not to get too deep into it, what Candy had did for us at the last meeting, we actually put the enrollment down to each school. It's just something to keep in mind, 205, is our high school district has 3,800 students. We have 3,300 student enrollment alone just in 33C. So what happens is like you have half, they only have like I think 273 students. So some of the other things that kind of come to mind is that they're their own school district with 270 students. Think of the overhead, they've got a superintendent, they've got a principal, they got a dean of students, you know what I mean? There's a lot of overhead for that. Now, we don't want, again, it's going to, you know, very, you know, no still left behind, very George Bush of me, but yeah. we got to really focus on the masses. But it would be the ideal situation, if there's a spot open in the school board that filters into 205, we would love to fill it with someone that we can back at the HTRO. Chances are we won't be able to. Our main focus is the three, both the three districts, but we would love to do all of them. Do we have it locked up at uh, 205 and 33C? Do we have 33C, we do not have locked up. So 205 need, is pretty locked up. We need how many for 33C? 33C, I believe we need two more. Two more. Two more, okay. Okay, and then we have 92. I only have one, possibly two. Yeah, we're going to try to fill it. 33C, I think. Okay. Mike's going to. Mike, two point question. First of all, i got three neighbors that I think are viable candidates for good people. Their problem is the Facebook bashing. You know, there, there's two of them that are really worried about that part of the so that has to be explained a little bit. These are really good opponents. Huh? No. 
No. Well, no, no. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that, put that, you know what, like the only thing I'm gonna say, and aside from everything that everyone's been through, um, Facebook has been very heated. Yeah. Like social media is very heated. And it isn't just what our local politics is on the okay. national state. Okay. They've got to have the desire to make a change because social media is not going to go away. Right. So again, I would love to have them if they're great candidates, yeah. but if they're going to roll over because of social media, then we may not be the group for them. The best thing to do is maybe I'll get them to come out, maybe I'll get somewhere and <coughs> sit down with you or whoever. But that, that's perfect. Then my other point is, I was thinking, you know, and I thought about this before, consolidation of the school districts. I'd love to see if there, there is a will or a way, but it has to be voted on amongst the residents, and I believe. But if we could combine 91, 92, and 33 into one school district, that would different, um, you know, income levels, there's a lot of different dynamics there. If you eliminate two superintendents, two, you know, it, 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 that makes a big difference. Well, by five, so, can't. But like, okay. yeah, like 92, though, that kind of resides in a lot for it. So then you, I know the school districts, but they're, you know what, Mike, I'll be honest with you, I'm not saying it's a bad idea, I'm far from it, but just us trying to get people and get them on the school board, yeah, that in itself hard. is it's a really huge fun. feat. Yeah. And then knowing what we need people to do once they get on the board, right. and that's the other thing. So I, I, don't, I don't think that redistricting right. really falls into the school board itself, but it, it's, it's a great point. Okay. Okay. And when I brought up Taft, a lot of overhead for 275. There's something Caparelli Rock can take care of. She's running for a reason. Yeah, I mean, we talked to her about something like that. Like but problem she's problem. the one that would have the spirit at that. Not yeah, right, 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 right. Right. We just got to do like Jay said. Yeah, yeah we, we got to get, get people in then we can start making changes. Well, we're worried about the students way they're being taught. And that's oh, no. Well, that's a little cool. question. Excuse me, there's, a, there's a, a woman behind you with Trump. Did you have a question? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that, that's that's my that's my, that, that's my report. And I, 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 heard, I told people individually. I forgot to say it a few minutes ago. We are the strongest township in the county per capita. We have the highest weighted vote per capita. We're number three in the entire county for weighted votes, and uh, two that are ahead of us have almost double the population we. Do. So that means our group is doing the job, going out and working real hard, and we're making a difference. So we all need to be uh, mentored. So we got to just keep it up for the next one. Jennifer, you've got a, a report? No, we pretty much said it when it comes Carmen, to the report. You've got a treasurer's report before okay. you go to the other one. Yes, I do. Uh, we got $2,034.95 in our account right now. We have any committeemen? Any of the committeemen here have a report? Well, I don't have a report, but if, is there anybody here that has any questions for me about all of this stuff that's going on? Yes, I got it. So I seen a little bit on the email, I think on the Homer patch, or mm -hmm. I was just curious, what, what is the situation? Well, right now, uh, right now I haven't been charged with anything, but I mean, if you want, do you want to know the story? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I got a little bit okay. on this. Well, basically things started with a heated argument between Christine and I when we were running for trustee. Basically, she tried to get somebody to create a Facebook, a phony Facebook page to divulge village business about me. She did not know that I found out about it, but I did find out about it. And the day that we were elected, she came to our party. And I sat there and I told her, at that day, I am not your friend. I don't know what you think you were doing. I said, people like you do not exist in my world. I am not about drama. I'm not about bullshit. I told you, my your business. Maybe I just really just yep. recorded. Yep. Uh, oh, no, I'm Can not. Can this not be recorded? Oh. I'm going I'm to throw it out there. I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I, we're going we're, we're gonna to be coming upon well, this election. I'm not going to say anything about what's going on, what, what happened per right. se. All I'm going to say is this is. I'm talking about the whole meeting. In general. Yeah, in general. Yeah, that'll be the last thing I want to get you in trouble. So. No, this is what has led up to this. There have been many things that she has done to me behind the shadows, and when this last incident took place, I had had it. I was done. It was inappropriate, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. But this was something that just did not transpire a couple weeks ago. This has been going on for the last year. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. 
Christina, did you want to make a motion to vote on whether we want to? I would like, I would, yes. I, I, it makes me super Can you make the vote? Would you make the motion? Huh? Would you make the motion? I motion to not have this re this meeting recorded okay. anymore. I did, okay. Okay. Do we want to hear from Brad just before we? Well, let's, let's get a motion on the floor. Okay, I'll There's second. a motion on the floor. So. I'll second. Or now we can go into discussion. So. Okay, discussion. Brad? <clears throat> Is this an open meeting? Do you have elected officials? The precinct kitty men are elected. This falls under the Open Meetings Act. It does. This yes. isn't this isn't a this isn't a private okay. venue. Venue. Well, there you go. The problem is that if we're gonna talk about strategizing yep. Jandies, yep. are we allowed to have a closed session where it's not a closed session at the end? We're not talking about policy though. We're talking about we're not talking about policy, we're not talking about strategy well, right now. Exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, we can go into exact if we need to. Sure. Yeah. I don't yes. Yeah, and anybody we're can motion to go into that, correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean okay. if we're talking about Policy, you know, because we're elected oh, officials, that's one thing, but if we're talking about yes, policy, that, does, that doesn't right. fall under open most meetings. Of, most of these meetings won't be about too much or about anything about except about uh, well, guest speakers. Okay. And uh, when we have uh, policy, we'll do executive session. So if there's a landowner, you want to talk about it. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. All right. I take the advice of uh, Mr. Carmen because uh, he's the closest to a lawyer besides yeah. me, and I think I want to know or not. <laughs> so, uh, Carmen says we, uh, if we start to talk yeah. about policy, yeah. then okay. we'll go to the executive yeah. session. Same thing with candidates. Yep. And, 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 you know, I don't want any names it. being brought up about who's running for what. Or suggested sure people. Right. right. Okay. We're all in agreement there. All right. Yes, that's it. So yeah, but the, it, it would go in exact. People yeah. that are not in, in an elected official capacity would have to ask to be leave. Okay. Just, just so everybody's aware of so it. Yeah. So, does the motion die? Do we have to yes. withdraw our motion then? Motion dies. Motion dies. Right. Right. second. Okay, then uh, I think uh, Mike Nomo has a report. He organized the golf outing. And I don't want you to talk too long about the senior no. expo. expo. No, we don't want to talk about the golf outing. Well, no, the expo is, is, is not policy. No, just okay. tell everybody to date and sure, what sure. It is. Okay, well, first of all, um, last year we ran a golf outing. Uh, actually, it was, it, was, it was on September 25th or 26th, and had, uh, uh, a lot of people come out. Uh, it, and and we, the whole idea is to raise money, okay? Uh, it's a golf course that my family owns, so we're able to get a nice little deal on it. We're asking $50 for nine holes, and we'll provide food uh, as well. And uh, I'll be a straight up honest, the golf course is charging us $25 for, for, for per person, which is, you know, in this day and age, it's a great deal, gas cars and all. So, um, you know, it's nine holes, it'll be a couple hours, and my, you know, everyone knows I'm about camaraderie, people getting together. And, just, and, 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 you know, I want people to wake up at that prom, call Mike, call the same, call Rosie, call uh, anybody, you know. I mean, we're, we're all friends here, we're all, you know, I mean, I always said we're all good people. I mean, none of, you know, there was always that one jerk in the crowd or whatever, but I we've we got a good group here. I mean, I mean, we can trust each other. You know, if I break down on the highway, I know I can maybe call Carmen or, 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 or Jay or Steve, they'll come and help me, and vice versa. That doesn't happen in a lot of areas. You know? So, Mike, are we calling this the second annual? This is the second annual golf party. <laughs> How much did we raise last year? Do you remember? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. There's four digits, I know that. It's over $1,000. It's over $1,000. Yeah. It's I mean, like, a, like a bleep. I mean, it was nothing. So what we'll do with this one is, you know, do it closer to the pen, you know, the longest drive, and do 50-50s on all of us. So you can put maybe five bucks in the pot. If you get closest to it, you get half that pot. If not, it goes into the HGL. So, um... I was you know, working my team this year. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, it's a nice course. Everyone would agree that I played last year. It's a nice, comfortable course. Um, you know, and, uh, does, it, does it have a windmill? Or oh, like, yeah, you've got yeah, one plenty of cars that one goes. Jamie, I still would be in the car. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and so what is it again? It's on uh, well, October second. Okay. It might. And we have a rain date of October. And if the reporters rain, which boy, I'm so used to when I find things. Uh, it's the following weekend. The following week, we'll do it. Uh, the reason why we started at a later time is because, again, I don't want to take away from you know, my, my family's money there, and so they can get the morning people out of the way, and then we'll have the whole course over. So, Mike, can we have an arrow on the seventh hole or the fourth hole? The beginning Tell us, which, us yeah. which way to go. It's recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's recording. 
<laughs> no, it's okay. It's not. Uh, so, uh, but no, I, I, I hope everyone could come in and pass, spread the word. Uh, we want four sons, so, you know, if um, Angel and Jim join, try to get some other people, maybe three or four sons if they can. So, um, I got copies. I got copies. I got one. It'll be posted on Facebook. Steve's going to blast it out. And when you guys get it, share it to get it out there. And uh, I love my text. My, you can text me, email me with a response if you're, you know, if for when you're going to do it. Good to know ahead of time so we can get the food ready and prepare for it and everything. And, uh, you know, if anyone wants to donate food, they're more than welcome to. But, you know, we'll do what we can to make the accommodations as easy as possible. And uh, last but not least, September 10th is the Homer Lifestyle Expo. Something that um, I'm taking. Homer Township. Homer Township. Yeah. Homer Township Senior Lifestyle Expo. Okay? So, huh? it's going to be at Hadley Middle School from 11 to 2 on September 10th. Um, and what I'd be asking people to do, and we're doing, you know, we're blasting out to all the, uh, all the stores, businesses in the area to participate. We're charging only $50 for a booth, a 10 by 10. All that money is going to go towards a Christmas party for the seniors. We're not collecting any money. Okay, and I expect a big Christmas party. We're talking about doing it at Tazos. I'm also um, looking at doing, if we get enough money, I want to do a senior Halloween party. And yeah. it'll be fun. Maybe they might dress up and come and have a good time. And I was thinking a senior prom. Yeah. Maybe we get the senior prom. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's over yet in Christmas or whatever. Yeah. No, I mean, Steve, just, you need a date for the senior prom. <laughs> <laughs> If, you know, I mean, everyone who's participated up to this point has been fantastic. I mean, you can't ask for a better group. When the tea party, Bill's Rosie, I mean, went all out with these tea cups. Who, who went to that? Who was there? Um, I didn't even hear myself. about the it. Senior tea? Oh, well, that's before you're on the camera. Yeah, bingo. Was was another one. So, they they were you were there, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah the senior tea. Did another senior tea? Yeah. I mean, it was, out, it was out of this world. I mean, it was, it was like you walked in and you were like in uh, Oak Brook Taj Mahal or something. It was really, it was, it was really classy. And then we did, you know, we did do a Christmas party at uh, Blueberry Hill. Uh, no, that was Valentine's Day party, I'm sorry. And they were generous enough to give us half off of all the food. And I had donations to pay for the rest um, from uh, Touch of Green and More Builders. They both gave money to pay for that. So um, we, we, we got those seniors in a good position right now. They love it. And everyone else that went this past Tuesday saw, and we got a good crowd. We have 72, which is our highest amount of people. And we're asking questions, uh, will you go to the Senior Expo? They all raise their hand. Are you going to next month's bingo? They all raise their hand. Uh, they're doing senior yoga now. So it, it's turned out to be a great, great thing for us. And uh, my goal is to get 100 bingo or 72. I, I expect that after the, the expo, we'll get over 100. Uh, we can handle it with the amount of people we're getting now to help out. So um, a lot of good things happening. Yeah. Reach out to me if you have any questions or you know want to help out. Or you, know, you got on board. You saw what happened on Tuesday. Had a lot of fun. So I don't. Um, I would object. If you want to be part of the oh, senior, yeah, okay. but like a volunteer for the seniors, you just can't go there and show up. You got to be uh, voted on by the township board to be on the committee. So if you're uh, wanting to volunteer, let Mike know. Mike brings your name forward to the board. And I'll take your vote. And then, we, then we vote at our board whether or not to let another person come on. So we have, uh, we have to make sure that we're vetting people because uh, some of the seniors may not like certain things. I guess. Oh, so we're just going to leave it with that. That we're going to, you must be on the committee to uh, do it. And I know there's a lot of people that are on the committee here already. Well, we have a situation where I removed Angel from the board six times on Tuesday <laughs> <laughs> because of her antics and stuff. So, 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 she, 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 she keeps coming back, though. So you, should, you guys should know there's oh. only one exception. Thank in that. you, Mike. You did a good job. <laughs> Keep up the good work. And, See, um, now Carmen's going to. Make the exception on there about the children. Oh, so. I'm sorry. One thing I want to point out to you if anyone has children that need volunteer hours, again, submit them in. We'll get the clearance and everything. They will be the only exceptions out, yes. of, out, out of adults that want to participate. And, you know, but everything has to be approved by the board. So, so I can't myself. look it for community service yes. hours. Yes. Preferably high school age. High school, okay. yes. 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 Okay, and now we're going to have a nice report about Tazos Community Center. Just what everybody wants to hear on your big screw.
No, what we're going to talk about, let me go into my segue. Thanks, Steve. So <laughs> what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Pritzker's tax relief and how he's finagled a way to tell people to, to give his vote to him because he thinks he's saving us all money. Which he is not. We're just shifting the money. Um, I have the privilege to be the assessor for here in Homer, Homer uh, Township. Um, I really love and enjoy what I do. I was sitting down and, and having a conversation with my three boys over a weekend, having a couple beers, kind of enjoying life, and they were asking me what my job is. And then my oldest asked the question about, well, Dad, what about you know J.P. Prisker giving us more money in our senior, our exemptions, which is going to go in effect in 2024, which a lot of people don't know yet. But they passed the bill, and it's a public act of 102-895. And what it does is it changes the um, homestead exemption, giving everybody an extra $2,000 in the Cola counties. Well, everybody who doesn't know what a Cola county is, everything that surrounds Cook County. Now, why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, you ask yourself those questions. And that's one of the questions that came up, and my oldest pointed it out, and I said, well, it's kind of like he's trying to win votes. And he says, well, I don't understand. You know, he's going to save us tax dollars. I said, no, he's not. <laughs> so to explain that, I pulled out a dollar. Now this is not real, but just so everybody knows. And I said, this is our tax levy. So Steve Bellic is supervisor of the township. He says, I'm gonna levy the entire township for a dollar. So here's our dollar, right? And he says, well, I gotta collect this dollar. So who, how does he collect this dollar? It goes to our property tax. So I'm gonna use you guys for guinea pigs, is that okay? So if we take if we take the dollar and we divide it up to every household that we have, well, we only got three right here, but just so you know. Carmen, don't throw it in. No, so we're gonna give it, it to Jen, and we're gonna give Jay two because he's got a bigger house. And then Steve gets some extra dollar because, you know, he gets a regular dollar. And what happens is, is Steve, let's say Steve has a homestead exemption, so he's gonna give his dollar to Jay. So give your dollar to Jay. Nice job, Jay. Yeah. And now that Jen has a veteran, and he gets a little more of an exemption, she's gonna give her dollar to Jay. And that's how that works. So when we spread the dollar around, <laughs> Jay gets the burden of the taxes. And, 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 what about my wife and kids come and take the dollar away from me? You're good. <laughs> Steve gets a little bit of a break. Jen gets a little break. They're still paying their taxes on the dollar, but they're getting a little bit more of a break. Jay's absorbing all that break. Just like a lot of us in the in the household income that we have in this area, we're absorbing those taxes, and that's what's happening. It's just a shift of wealth. And he's saying, oh, I'm gonna save you money, I'm gonna save you money. Well, that's not really the truth. He's actually giving the money, he's spreading the money over a larger vast of people who's gonna be paying the bill. And a lot of them are us as taxpayers. And, uh, am I understanding this right, that it is just in the collar around Cook County? Yes. yes. So Cook County, because they're pretty much broke anyway, yes. they're not getting hit with it. But all of us suburbs yes. are the ones that are going to pick up the pieces for the rest of the state. And as everybody knows, and I have a little diagram here, everybody knows this blue and green represents our high school and 33C. Okay? That is 75% of our tax dollar. So for every dollar, that we pay in the property tax, 75 percent of that goes to 75 cents. Yeah. It goes to the school districts. Yep. That's why when Jay talks about CRT. the school districts being an important part of our community, this is why. I have some great stories. I worked with a lot of people over the years. I actually worked for somebody that worked for 33C. She just started out. She's in there. Budget comes around, and they're like, "What do you need?" She's like, "I don't need anything. I got everything I need." No, no, you need a new stapler. She's like, no, I, I just started. I got a brand new stapler. What do I need? No, no, no. If we don't spend the money, we can't get it back. Oh my God. So this is right. this is the stories that we hear. This is the stories and the lies that we hear to what? To get votes, you know, to steal votes, you know, and that and that's what that really bothered me with the whole situation when Brooksburg comes out and says, oh, I got a tax relief for everybody. We're gonna get, we're gonna raise the exemptions. That doesn't really mean that that's going to help us with our taxes, because at the bottom end of all this, they may put a multiplier on top of that, because they still have to raise the same amount of money. So that's where I get I get a little upset, and that's why I kind of wanted to just kind of talk about it today, kind of bring it to life that you know this is this is how they're how they're saying the Democrats are saying, hey, vote for me, I'm giving you a tax relief. 
really, and, and all they're doing is shifting money. Hey, Carol, like you said, well, people are like, well, we got to spend it because otherwise we're going to lose it. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't spend it, and if I'm, if I'm understanding this correctly, technically, if they have that money left over, they're supposed to refund it back to the taxpayer. Yes, they are. They don't want to refund it back to the taxpayer. That's it's too much work. That's why the well, government. That next year's budget is lower than. Right, right. And so when Jimmy and I went to the financial meeting right after the, right after the, uh, the TRO, we ended up at the financial meeting that Monday at uh, two at two o five, and they said they were going in for seven percent because that's the max that they could go in for. Doesn't mean that's what they're going to get. But they always go in for the max. They probably end up at about three and a half, five percent. Right. They can't go. So they, see, go for five. they always go. For, they always go for more than what they need. That way, they have the fluff. They want to open up a coffee shop, or if they decide they want to have a meeting off premises somewhere else. <coughs> Grant, who gives them that money? I was, <coughs> when they put the lot away, that money was supposed to go to schools. Yes. None of it did. No. Nope. Correct. When they put the river boats in, that was supposed to go to schools. And none of it did. It, well, it does, really, but it, it doesn't. really went there. But what they did is they took the money from the boats they and gave it to the schools, and then they cut the money they were given the schools out of the school budget from the state. And so they reallocated. They, they put one they in. They gave them what they were supposed to give, but they didn't give them what they should have got from the state. So it ends up being zero. But the, I'm not sure how this works, so maybe Carm can explain it. If you uh, raise the thing at 5% every year, and then you, so now you're, if you got 100 bucks, and then you raise it 5%, and then the next year, you raise it 5% again, because that's what they do. So the, after a while, isn't that like compounding the interest? So. And a 5% increase over time might really only not be 5, it might be like 7, 8, 9, 10. Is that correct? Yeah, over time. Yeah. You know, if anybody that owns a small business, I can assure you, if you ran your small business this way, you'd be out of business. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so the school district, they every year they want to go to the max for the levy. Okay, so. Who gives them that money? It is a these dollars. Our property taxes. Oh, the property tax. <laughs> your property taxes give you that. Give so you they'll that increase your property taxes right. to to fit the right. levy that the schools right. end up going to get. They go for seven percent. They may only end up or be able to justify that three and a half to five percent. Routinely, they get the five, and then we get levied as homeowners and residents. For that additional five percent. So I think they can. They, 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 can get they five, can't go over they five. Can, right? They can raise the taxes five percent without a referendum. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Once they go to referendum, so, yes. they can so raise. So every five. every year they can raise it. They can raise it five percent. Yes. They yes. Need so or permission or anything. Without it, but and what about the justification on that? Uh, what what did what did the school what district have to cover? They said they had to rehab the auditorium. But they don't even have to go to referendum because the library raised their their levy. An outrageous number, and I don't remember what it was by a vote of the board. Then they got to go to a uh, tax hearing, so they have to publish in the newspaper that they're going over the five percent cap, and uh, then the board just votes for it, and then they get it. So that's what the library did one year. And I don't remember what it was, but it was like a way over five percent. When we were there at the uh, financial meeting for 205. Big thing that they were focusing on was uh, renovating the auditorium. All of, all of the new sound equipment, all the acoustics that they wanted, and that was they were really pushing it at the financial meeting because that was going to justify, from what I understood. I, you got to read between the lines with this stuff. A lot of it's a word salad, guys, and just you know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm a uh, active school board uh, meeting. <laughs> uh, Part taker for about a year now, um, so you got to really read between the lines as to what they're saying at these meetings. Yeah, because the they gaslight like stuff. They're saying, "Oh, we really, 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 really need it." Right. Yeah, they really, well, really, really need and, it. You so, know, Jim and I and actually Angel had come into the meeting at the time. It was just the three of us there. Your wife. So oh, Carol, Carol wasn't there at, at that meeting, but the three of us were there. But the three of us were there, and. 
they were really focusing on what they needed to do and the money they needed to spend. Because they weren't only asking for 5%, they were asking for 7%. Yeah. They only get 5%. Anything over 5% would have to go to referendum. And they're going to choose I mean, we, we've, all, we've all seen it in our own town. We've seen it in our own town. We got to raise the levy. We got to raise the yeah. levy. We're not going to be able to pay for our public works. We're not going to pay for our public works. And they lie. We're, we're not going to pay yeah. for our public works. And then all of a sudden, we don't raise the levy, and they all of a sudden, we're we have five million dollars surplus. Five million dollars surplus. So sorry. Mike? The, the, <clears throat> this is just out of ignorance here. I'm just just wondering. Let's say they raise it five percent. Can the school board shut that down? The school board has to, the school board has to vote on that. Yeah, they yeah. Have to vote. Yeah, they have to increase the levy. They have to do. They're the final approval. Yeah, so so there doesn't have to be a referendum, board. but to the to the citizens, yeah. the school board, they can shut it down. Ultimately, the treasurer and the financial advisor of the school district, like we were there at the meeting, they discuss on what they want to go for. <coughs> they agree on what percentage you're going to go for. So you know, I'm going to say I say she because it was a woman that's in charge, and then that goes before the school board. And then the school board decides if they're going to. Thanks. The, 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 the school board say yes, oh, no, whatever no, no. they're told. The school by board is our oversight. Right. right. For that 75%. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to do that. We need to do that. Why 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 we need to do that. I don't know what the number is because we have oh, I, maybe Jay might, but yeah. I know if you listen to uh, the stats about schools, all these schools are have left way less kids than before because they're going to private schools because the parents don't want to send their kids to the scumbag schools that they've got around here and everywhere else. So, uh, you know, what, what's happening there? Are they going to uh, cut their stuff? No. They're going to say they still have the same amount of maintenance the same amount of everything. So it's up to the school board to have the courage to tell the superintendent and the finance director that we're not gonna accept that. The answer is no. No races, no nothing, trim it down. Because I just heard on the radio this morning that there's one school up north that got half the kids back in a high school. That's it, half the kids. So. What's, they didn't talk about the taxes, but if you got half the kids, why do you deserve to get the same amount of any kind of raise? So that's the second part of my question that directed towards Carmen. You know about this stuff. They have to, uh, the school has to has to present this information to the school board. They ha absolutely have to have a appropriated budget to the school board, right? And, and do they just? So usually a levy is set before <coughs> budget's in place? So a lot of times you'll see a levy usually going in like the months of November, December, so they can place their levies in. And a lot of times it's all it's all speculation. You're kind of speculating what's going to happen going into the future. Are we going to make enough revenue? Um, what's our going to expenses be? They're usually doing forecasting and budgeting to understand that those numbers to come in there educatedly and talking to whether it's your board members and stuff to say. Hey, this is the levy we need. We gotta push this levy. We need this money, and they'll sell it. They'll try to sell it until somebody's smart enough to say, "Wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute." Now, Mr. Dan Fialco is a great example of that. Well, I don't understand where this is numbers coming from, and I'm not sure why you think you need this much money. And then when questions are, are asked like that, people get a little frustrated, and and then you're going into the board meeting, and then you're under, now you're understanding a lot more than you did before. And you're saying, wait, 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 we don't need an extra three million. So that's where I was going with yeah. that. And like it, it does it look like right. does it look like a fi business financial spreadsheet that's six and a half feet long where the average citizen sitting on a school board looks and says, Oh man, yeah, what exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. yeah. look at it. They just and you, you want to rely on a Chinese scroll yeah, that hits the school. floor. You wanna rely on your you wanna rely on your financial advisors and stuff that are actually presenting this stuff, but if you're not questioning it, you, you don't know what you don't know. You know what I mean? So if you're questioning in it and you don't know what it is, at least you're going to find out as you're moving through the process. And that's that's where the education comes in. So that's kind of why I was, I, yeah. I don't mean it takes so long enough. No, to, that's right. Steve's point, I mean, the, the burden is going down. But yeah. Right. But they're not going to present that. It's in that sheet somewhere. It's in that presentation somewhere, but they're not going to point that out. No. No way. You have to dig for it. Right. right. You have to find it. Yeah. Well, you have at the county, look at it. I'm on the county board, and at the county, <coughs> The Democrats are in control, and they feel like you should tax to the max, and so 
I don't even go to the budget meetings because I thought, why should I waste my time to go to a budget meeting when I'm going to vote no to the budget? I don't even need to go. I already know I'm voting no before I sit down to vote no. You know, because I'm not going to vote for a tax increase. And so until the Republicans take over again and don't do that, I just vote no. I already know what I'm voting this year. I'm voting no. You know, Jen has something to add, Jen. No, I, I, it was earlier, but in 2020, across the board, all the school districts voted uh, three to five percent increase yep. on the tax levy. And we had Shoppy at one of our meetings, it was it was a June twenty twenty meeting, and he carried out like he carried out about, oh we have all these studies and each study cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And I think there were three different ones that were coming up when you were talking about population, you know, the overcrowding, and then he also but he he had just passed, remember, he had passed an increase for the administration. It was a three percent increase for all it was for payroll it wasn't yeah, for right. anything that he was telling us um, and then again I watched them do it again for 2021 where again all the schoolers so even though these kids weren't going to school they weren't attending class a lot of them suffered um, they still pushed in these three to five percent increases and I've been saying this for the past couple of years it's not me just on a soapbox 74 to 75 percent of our taxes go to these school districts and so that's why we really need to be pushing people to be more accountable about these school boards because this is a heart of your taxes <coughs> it's three quarters of your property tax and then for those of us that have children or those of us that care about the children that don't belong to us you know we have to fight this is very important I commend Jay I commend the shakes I commend Karen and I commend Chrissy and her husband Mike for doing and fighting this battle for the past two years and getting it out there to the forefront because people don't realize and they don't believe what's going on in the schools. So this election, like Jay said, is very, very important for us to start taking back these seats. And if you know somebody who has thick skin, they don't have to be polished, but they have to be somebody who has thick skin because yes, they are going to get beat up in social media. We'll get this a tax on the board too. Yes. And this is but this is what we have to start doing. And there are people so like us. And some of these boards that we have positions open for, if, let's say, our massive red wave in Illinois really does happen, which I think we have a very good shot, um, some of these boards, that will, if our people get in, they will be the controlling interest on these boards. You know, and what I said earlier about the weighted votes and about our group, just think of this. Every single person we endorsed in the primary, one except for Granada, my partner. But he wasn't able to go out and campaign at night because he worked. So, you know, I get it why he didn't win. But everybody else did. So now when we go out and we support people, that should be where they understand that they're going to get a big push to win. So we just got, Jay's got a hard job. Or, I don't know which who's doing all the betting. If it's your group or uh, it's, it's our group. It's MC's our group. group. We're, we're, all, all, we're, we're all doing it. We're it's all a team together. Yeah. We're all a team. You, you the gotta, most yeah. important thing is you, you get somebody that has the willingness to say no and not be afraid, because the the whole rest of the board gets along with the superintendent. Yeah. And like that high school guy, you know, man, I got when I found out they got a coffee shop and they charged the kids, so the parents got to give the kids money for coffee bucks. besides the stupid tax you got to pay that place. Well, and they learn all that crap there. Well, a lot, a lot of what had happened, and what Steve's crap. referring to, you guys may or may not know. I'm going to say this because Grant is filming. The past two years, they have closed down the cafeteria at the high school. Okay. The high school cafeteria prior to COVID, um, it met all of the Food and Drug Administration standards as to what needed to be available for the students to eat at lunch. Well, when they closed it down due to COVID, they went to box lunches that came from, was it Quest, I think? Yeah, I think it was Quest. And they're, a, they're the number one food supplier for our jail system as well, just so you know where we're going with this. And those lunches that the school district have chosen do not even meet the food and the FDA 
nutrition standards and actually uh, Brent Profilio did all the research on this so if you guys really want more info on it he's the guy to speak to but they didn't even meet that criteria but here's the kicker they built a coffee shop they couldn't serve the kids regular nutritious food but they were able to sell them coffee nicotine and these kids are under 18 years of age, so that was okay. Caffeine. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God. Caffeine. <laughs> Caffeine. My apology. But but they were able to get coffee. these kids. Yeah, special coffee. They were able to get these kids caffeine and co I mean coffee, but yet they couldn't give them a nutritious meal. So what was the difference? You're, you still have somebody prepping it, okay? Now the real kick in the pants was. They still budget for a full cafeteria and their staff. Yeah. They got the lunches for free from the government. So where did that money go? And why are we still putting in a 5% lottery? What's the staff doing? And the, right, exactly. Well, these the are staff all questions. Right, right, these are staff all questions. Staff got it from a catering company. Angel, did you have a question? That you well, had? I just want to, I want to make sure that this is so everybody knows. Um, the new, he hasn't been in too long, but it is the financial superintendent for 33C has been putting things out and laying them out very well and making it easy for people to read. So if you start paying attention, you'll see, like, he doesn't make it like, a, you know, things that normal people aren't going to catch. The other thing is, I think somebody was asking about the percentage, how many left the school system. I think they said they lost, like, 8%. Uh, um, 6% the first year, 8% the second yes. year, and they said 6% of the 8% the from this last past year were being homeschooled, and the other 2% were being private schools. That was the last number I heard. So, sure I it's mean, be it's probably higher, right? So if those are the numbers we're hearing, it's probably almost all. So with, with all that being said, the focus is, and we take away from the money and everything else, you see what's going on in our country. There isn't one thing that we are shooting for for these school boards that is really political. And what I'm going to say is that if you're a Democrat, the same things that we're fighting for as conservatives for these kids, you should be for as well. Yep. You see what I'm saying? It shouldn't be a political thing having these kids learn the Constitution. Having these kids be upstanding Americans that love their country. And there's a whole different mindset coming in right now and the ideology that's being pushed, the, you know, the woke narrative. It really is just out of control. They are pushing social issues in the school atmosphere that do not need to be pushed. That is between that student, that student's parents, and if that student's having a problem, that's why we have counselors in the event that that needs to happen. But we do not need to ha make every social issue that's out there in the curriculum. And, th and anybody should be for that. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. That's right. But the world is changing, and it's not changing by the masses. You have, like Jimmy says, the short body. You know, because we have a digital format and we have social media, they have this bullhorn that makes them look like they are so much bigger than they really are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and but they're running with it because so many people are silent. You're right. Yeah. So you got people that want to run for school board. <clears throat> like my wife says, it's time to put on your big girl or your big boy pants because this is. This is our country. The children, our children are, are our future. There's no gray area. <coughs> That's why we ended up like this. Crucial. Right, no more gray area. You guys weren't born yet, but I was there. Nikita <coughs> Khrushchev, you might have been around. Nikita Khrushchev said that he's going to uh, conquer the United States with communism without a shot being fired. And then he listed the, how he was going to do it. The top thing was take over the schools, yeah. infiltrate the schools. And, 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 and don't one trade one of the political parties. And the media. Or both. Yeah. Oh, That's what's happening. Speaking of, can, uh, can I, I know uh, I just got word on who Ozinga picked. Can I say who it is? Yeah. 
Okay, so his first chair is the guy who uh, was the announcer at the committee men thing. Joe Crawl. Uh, yes. <laughs> He's his first vice, and his second is Ruben. Is that Ruben's second vice chair? Who? Yeah, Ruben. Ruben. And Ruben? Yeah. Um, Jean Kelly is his treasurer. She is from DuPage County. She, she works for Homer Jean Kelly. Jean Kelly? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she's, 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 a, she's a, a Homer group. Okay. She's out of DuPage, but uh, she's a Bolingbroke trustee also. Okay, she was picked for um, his trustee. Well, that's good because she's a very honest person. Okay. So she's she's yeah. real friendly with us. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's all they named no, first. That's it. Is that his wife? And should it be more? Any secretary? No secretary? Uh, so far, uh, this is all I got so far. I, it's happening well, right we're now. We're Mitchell, one secretary at the thing. Oh, did she? Okay. Right. Chrissy, can, oh, you, yeah. can you repeat but, it again? Uh, his first chair is Joe Crawl. 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 K R E L. Frank Furness, sir. Gotcha. Okay. And then uh, his second is Ruben. Okay. And his uh, treasurer is Jean Kelly. Jean? Okay. You can't get any more honest than Jean. Okay. Okay. And we got Ruben. Right. Good. And Ruben to you. Okay. So congrats, Ruben. Four minutes. Okay. Now well, the uh, time the sergeant at arms says one minute. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, we'll send out more more emails next time so we get more people. That's why you keep the math to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> God bless you guys. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. First. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.